prepare to be captivated by the business story of the week, hosted by me, Shaheen Shan. Join us on a journey through the twists and turns of entrepreneurial triumphs and setbacks. Immerse yourself in the narrative and witness the magic that turns dreams into reality. This is Business Story of the Week. All right. Welcome to another episode of Business Story of the Week. I don't know how many of you guys have actually seen the film, The Matrix. I was a huge fan when it came out. And I really feel like today we have the real Morpheus on. Now, here's the interesting thing. Before the show, we've been struggling with some technical issues and whatnot. And for me, it's not such a big deal. But for our guests, uh, things tend to take longer and they tend to be more difficult because Chad uh, is legally blind. Chad Foster, our guest today, is a motivational keynote speaker, sales and finance leader, and an inspirational agent who works at Red Hat IBM. He's the first blind executive to graduate from Harvard Business School's program for leadership development, and he's been featured on NBC, CBS, Forbes, Atlanta Journal, Constitution, USA Today, and countless other magazines. Chad says, people are often surprised at what I was able to achieve in spite of being blind. But to the contrary, I feel I am successful because I am blind not in spite of it. Chad is a badass, a legitimate certified badass. He trains Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I know we've talked about BJJ here on the show a lot. And that's one of the sports where I can totally imagine somebody doing it, somebody doing it blind. But I couldn't imagine it being easier to do blind, but I can totally imagine it because Brazilian Jiu Jitsu a lot is based on feeling. So I I definitely want to get into that. I want to talk to Chad about that. Um, And Chad now uh, is involved as a a keynote speaker, as a consultant, and has been doing some amazing work. Chad, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Appreciate that. So tell tell us a little bit. I think we can we can start (laughs) off with this. What is it like? training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as a blind man. And are you totally blind, meaning you just see black? Oh, I don't see anything. So you started, yeah, your introduction said legally, but I am totally, as in I have a dog that leads me around blind. The only thing I get is light perception, which is why I wear sunglasses all the time. And that's because the the light just simply hurts my eyes because I can't focus it. So imagine if you will, when you go get dilated for a pair of eyeglasses and you step out into the sunlight, the bright sunlight. That's what it's like for me if I'm not wearing my shades. So yeah, I went blind at say 21 years old. So before I went blind, I did go get get dilated and adjusted for, for eyeglasses. And so I've experienced that. That's the closest thing I can really tell you to the pain that I feel when I step out in light and and what it's like. It's just almost like a, like a haze, you know, like a really deep fog. Um, nothing's useful. It's just really bright and, and painful. So hence I wear sunglasses all the time. And which is cool because n- nobody as a blind guy, nobody's going to question me about it. <laughs> it's one of the benefits. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. I've always wondered and I've never had the courage to ask somebody why blind people wear glasses. I just thought, hey, you know, there's no reason. But that that makes a lot of sense. So, Chad, uh, in this shorter form of business story of the week, tell us briefly about your business story. Well, yeah, as I said, I, I went blind at, at 21 years old. And the interesting thing is I came out of that experience happier and more successful than before. My personal situation forced me to learn, forced me to really embrace and learn the anatomy of resilience. And so I went on to work in the technology space, had a successful career in the consulting world, worked for a top consulting firm, did everything from consulting to marketing to uh, financial analysis, ended up switching and getting into technology deal structuring. 
and I've led large pursuit teams in the financial strategy of large technology deals, of one multi-billion dollar deals. I've directed financial strategies for large technology services deals that have resulted in collectively over the course of my career over $45 billion in contracts, best in class margins, and industry leading growth. And so my background in the business world is in deal strategy, is in pricing strategy, it's in how to master the art of the capture strategy that you have for a pursuit, which is something that takes place, you know, 18, 24 months before the point of sale, all the way up to the pricing strategy at the point of sale. And then how do you have an execution plan where you can, you can monetize that um, 36 to 48 months post the point of sale. And so that, that has helped me um, have the opportunity to, to you know, do some meaningful work and, and lead some large teams, whether it was senior director as a pricing strategy and solutions organization at SRA International, senior director over global deal management at Red Hat or vice president over corporate finance at Red Hat. And so I've had the opportunity to do some things in the business world that are meaningful and, and interesting, especially, you know, maybe a bit unique for a totally blind person to do. But I think now what gives me the most fulfillment, the most joy, thing that I really enjoy is kind of shifting from the business performance that I've focused on throughout my career and really emphasizing my work on optimizing human performance. And so helping people understand what is that anatomy of resilience? How can I help each person reach their full potential so that they can fulfill their career goals, their personal goals, and contribute to organizational value? Yeah. So, okay. I got a couple questions for you. So can I ask how you got to being blind? What caused your blindness? You can ask me anything, man. Nothing is out of bounds for me. You can ask me absolutely anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have what's called RP, retinitis pigmentosa. It's an inherited eye disease that I got from my parents, but you know, they're not symptomatic. Okay. Come to find out I was genetically tested. I have a mutated LRAT gene, which means that I'm autosomal recessive. The, the disease that I have is autosomal recessive, which if you remember back to your biology classes in high school, you basically need two bad copies of the same gene in order to be symptomatic for something that is autosomal recessive. So my parents both are carriers of that gene, but neither are symptomatic. And so based upon that, again, going back to high school biology, there was a 25% chance that I would be symptomatic, a 25% chance that I would not be a carrier and a 50% that I could be a carrier, but not symptomatic. I ended up on the 25% side of that spectrum where I, I get am it. I get it. Yep. I get it. I get it. So you're a young, healthy guy in your twenties, whole world before you seeing things, all the beauty the world has to offer yep. visually. And then all of a sudden one day you're Boom. blind. Yeah, it wasn't all at one day, but Holy that's shit. effectively, yeah, Holy it was a wake-up call. Yeah, it was a wake-up call. Holy sure. shit. You know, talk he, about dealing with change. We, you know, I talk to organizations we were in all Europe. the time, and, they're, yeah. uh, and, and they're, they're dealing with changes and disruption, and how do they reinvent themselves? And that's why I think it helps me relate to what a lot of organizations are going through, whether it's digital transformation or new business models or what have you. What do you do when you're forced to reinvent the way that you've looked at everything? Yeah. So we were in Europe um, and we wanted to have an experience. And I don't know if you've heard about this, but mm -hmm. there is a restaurant um, and I think it is in, oh God, I think were we in Spain or Italy? We were in, we were in Spain. And the place is called Don's Lenore, I think. And it is an entire restaurant run by blind people. Do you know oh, about this? Uh-uh, oh, no. Oh, it's unbelievable. They're franchised, right? So the idea is you show up and they acclimate you. It's a, a five course gourmet dinner. Everybody in the restaurant is blind. Not only that, you have to eat in pitch black darkness. And I don't mean like there is not a light, not a flashlight. They lock up your phones in a locker before smartwatches, <laughs> everything. And you go in and it's about an hour and 45 minutes 
where you are being served by blind people, the chef is blind, and you cannot see a thing. Yeah. And yeah. I have to tell you, Chad, this was one of the single most extraordinary experiences. There were, I would say, 40, 50 people in the restaurant the evening I was there. I think about seven people walked out, paid. They paid for the meal. They walked out after 15 minutes because they couldn't handle, handle it. it. <laughs> and the rest of us had to just come. Yeah, we just had to come to this like comfort level of like, man, for us, this is, this is an hour and a half of this like experience. But for all the people who are here in this restaurant who are serving us, the waiters, the chefs, this is their life. And the level of acuity and sensitivity that they had developed, like they were walking around this restaurant like it was, like it was daytime. And yeah. none of them wanted us to feel sorry for them. None yeah. of them had any pity for themselves or anybody else. But yeah. much like you, they were like, you know what? This makes us a badass. This is, this is the thing that in spite of our disability is making us stronger. And I thought that was really fascinating. That's when I uh, read about you. I thought, man, you, you are basically a fully blind uh, CEO, right? So here's, here's my question for you. When you walk in to these boardrooms of these Fortune 50, Fortune 500 companies, and they're like, all right, the sales consultant is here. The uh, finance leader is here. And then they see you wearing the glasses and they go, holy shit. This fucking guy is blind. What is the what is their reaction to that? You know, it's it varies. It's usually pretty good nowadays. I've learned how to handle a lot of those situations. At first, you know, you sort of you you wonder how you're going to relate and connect with people, but I've sort of learned I've been in this situation now for what 22 years or something like that. And so I've learned how to disarm the situation. I like to use humor to put people at ease. If there are a couple of things that I know inspire people to want to follow other people, it's warmth and competence, right? And so a little bit of humor, a little bit of a blind joke, a little bit of a dog joke. I've got a big German shepherd who leads me around. And so I'm comfortable using a, a good joke to put people at ease. Also use a lot of that when I'm giving keynote presentations as well. So, you know, helping people be comfortable and make sure they know that I'm relatable uh, by telling a good joke here or there and then demonstrating some competency with the situation to let them know, yeah, I can't see, but I've, I've, still got, I've still got my house in order. Let's get down to business. And usually a lot of times if you can do that up front, it allows that distraction to dissipate and allows everybody to focus on the situation at hand. But, you know, quite frankly, in a lot of ways, my situation has given me an advantage of experiencing and embracing what you talked about in your experience in that restaurant and that is get getting comfortable with discomfort now a lot of people aren't really you know they're not accustomed to it they don't want to feel uncomfortable well i've been uncomfortable for so many years of my life throughout the process of going blind being uncomfortable not being able to see whether that's you know going blind that that long process of going blind that was really uncomfortable and then you know actually going totally blind and not knowing how i was going to get around and then getting a german shepherd seeing eye dog to lead me around everywhere that i go dealing with the uncomfortable situations like some of the ones that you refer to here walking into a, a business meeting with a seeing eye dog or you know traveling by myself from here to shanghai or here to singapore or all over europe or you name it with just me and my trusty German Shepherd seeing eye dog without being able to sometimes in the case of, you know, China and places in Europe and uh, Korea not speak the language, right? I can't speak the language, can't read the signage. And I've just, I've got a dog. It's just me and my, my buddy traveling. And yet I still want to get up and do my 5 a.m. workout and do all the things that I want to do. All these things help me learn how to embrace discomfort. And that's really where growth happens. And I think that's why I've come so far in my journey, in my career, is I was forced to embrace being uncomfortable from a very early age 
And that has allowed me to not get complacent. And in fact, that's why I seek out discomfort now, whether that's training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, as we talked about earlier, or skiing black and sometimes even double black diamonds um, on the mountain without being able to see. I want to be uncomfortable because I know that's where growth happens. Because if you're never getting outside of your comfort zone, then you're not growing. Life begins outside of our comfort zones. And guys, definitely check out Chad's website, blindambitionbook.com or chadfoster.com. There are videos of him skiing. If you've never seen a blind man ski, he's better than most people that I've seen up there that are, you know, that are that that have sight. So he's actually very good at that. Chad, let me ask you can this. I just, can I just what is quickly? it like? Where do you train? Yeah, um, yeah. The, the the website has an E in it. It's chadefoster.com. Chad Foster is actually a different person. Gotcha. Yeah, chadefoster.com. Sorry about that. We'll, we'll include it in the show notes as well. Sure. But tell us really quickly, what is it like training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Where do you train? Are you belted? Do you have a, a, a rank in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? How long have you been training? And what's it like training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as a blind person? So I trained locally here at Borges BJJ here in the Atlanta area. And at this particular academy, our professor, Professor Borges, also trains and teaches all of the Mar Marietta Police Department. And so it's not a competition heavy gym, but it's more self-defense and law enforcement related. So Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is so tactically useful that the Marietta PD has made it mandatory for all of the recruits. And so I get to go and train with captains and majors and SWAT team and people who take their jujitsu very, very seriously because it is literally in between them and their life and in between them and their service weapons. So instead of pulling out their weapon, they get trained on how to use jujitsu on the job so that they can be in control of situations without having to use deadly force. So these are people who take it very, very seriously and, uh, and I, I do too. Like I really, really, I've fallen in love with it. I actually went into jujitsu because I wanted to spend some time with my kids. And I obviously can't teach them how to shoot a jump shot anymore. But I can teach them how to defend themselves now <laughs> with BJJ. And so we, we all train in BJJ. And, you know, from time to time, we'll go down to the, the basement where I have a mat here at home. And we'll do a self-defense day. And the beauty of it is, you know, BJJ, for those who don't know... It is a really, really great martial art for learning how to get comfortable with discomfort. Because the first few times you got a black belt and they put you in a chokehold with no way out, it is terrifying. It feels like your head's inside of a vacuum cleaner bag. But it, it teaches you to settle into the terror and to not panic. And when stuff goes south, as it does on the mat and in life and at work and whatever, what if you could get really good at settling into the terror, just controlling your breathing, bringing your heart rate down, not letting your adrenaline take over, and just calmly stepping through that fear so you can look for a way out. And so that's one of the things that I really appreciate about it is it's really helped me learn how to settle into the fear, settle into the terror that I had because you walk into a gym first day and we've got some, some certified badasses in my gym. Let me tell you, we've got some killers in there, man. These guys are... No joke. And I'm a blind guy. I come in there and I can't see who I'm going up against. And some guys have, you know, many, many decades of experience on top of being incredibly in shape. And I'm in good shape, but I had never taken jujitsu. And I was almost 46 years old when I started. And I started two years ago, actually two years ago last month. So just over 24 months, I am a three-stripe blue belt. I'm, I'm not far away at all from getting my purple belt. So the belt system in jiu-jitsu goes white, blue, purple, brown, and then black. So I am moving along at a pretty good clip, but it's because I go so much. I really enjoy it. So it's one of those things that it's easy to get into and, and hard to get out of because it's so addictive and it's so fun. Uh, just the, the gamesmanship, the mental growth, the spiritual growth. And obviously, the just the the gamification of learning how to kind of you know put your opponent in in some positions that actually favor you. So it's it's really fun. There are really great people there. The camaraderie, 
that you build. It's it just it, it makes it a fantastic thing to do. So some you know a lot of times I'll find myself going there five or six times a week training for two hours a day on top of my weight training routine, which is you know at least an hour a day, four or five times a week. Amazing, amazing. So guys, check out Chad. We'll include his websites on the show notes. You can get his book, Blind Ambition. Can they get that on Amazon, Chad? Yeah, they can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, anywhere where books are sold, basically. It came out through HarperCollins back in 2021. So yeah, anywhere they, they buy books. It's also on Audible and Kindle format and, and all, basically any, any format or edition. Okay, super. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Hopefully, we'll be able to get you back on another time uh, and do a little bit uh, longer form. Sounds good. Appreciate the conversation. All right. So here's the thing. We try to get a little bit better every day, but we can't do it without you. So if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe below. And if you have any comments, just leave them in the space under.